yeah, I, I, I don't, I can't see that as anything other than success. Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. We're back in DCS, flying the Su 25T. We've basically completed our aircraft training, weapons training, all the different weapon systems, knowing how to employ them pretty effectively, getting practice with that. So we're going to jump into some missions. This is the first campaign mission of the Su-25 campaign, and with DCS World and the Su-25T module, they are the free components of DCS World, so if you want to try out DCS World and see if a flight simulator is a game for you, everything I'm sh I've been showing in my videos up to this point is completely free. I'm going to talk you through, I've actually gone through this a few times because it has actually been a little bit difficult to kind of figure out how to approach it in an effective way. I've even looked at other kind of tutorials and stuff out there, and even they don't really know a great effective way to approach it and the things that they'll suggest. I'll talk to you about why we won't do that. And I think I found the right approach for this, which is actually quite close to what the game tries to communicate, but you have to adapt a couple of things. So we'll talk through all of that. Um, we're also gonna modify our base loadout here and I'll explain why. But generally what we got here is a close air support mission where a flight of two Su-25Ts, us and a wingman, a computer controlled wingman, are going to be trying to assist friendly forces as they're essentially pushing up ground units, pushing up to capture an objective, but in their way are a bunch of armored units, a bunch of enemy tanks. And so our job is going to be to eliminate those tanks and weaken those defenses so that our units can capture the objective without getting destroyed. But here's kind of the high level view of how we're going to be moving up. There's also a aerial photograph here of what you're going to see from the air because again we, we don't have super advanced avionics and electronics and we're not going to have like an AWACS or anything like that. So we're going to have to visually identify the targets. When we get into this location they will mark the location of the targets with red smoke initially. After that smoke dissipates as we're doing multiple runs we're going to have to be able to identify where these things are so that we can get our, our weapons on target and engage effectively. So I'll kind of walk through what we're going to do in the mission planner here. The main reason I'm jumping into the mission planner is to modify our default loadout for our aircraft, and I'll talk through that, but it'll also show more details about what's going on in the mission itself. So here you can see where we're starting uh, at Sochi Adler, and you can see that it's got a route designated in here where we're going to take off. It wants us to fly up the coast, kind of come out here, fly in over the direction of travel, basically, of our friendly units uh, towards the enemy positions to, um, as it says here, search and engage. And here's where it kind of has turning points one and two. We're going to talk about why we're not going to fly to those points. This is where this route gets kind of confusing and misleading, is if you just fly along this route, you will get shot down, <laughs> and that's not very good. So with the enemies in the area here, these are kind of the enemy armor units that we're going to be mainly contending with. These are some other enemy, I believe, artillery units. And then I believe there's another line of armored vehicles, uh, tanks out here, uh, in front of protecting the objective, which is what our friendly units are moving down this road to attack. Now, it's important to note that these are not air defense units. However, they do have large machine guns, large guns that they can fire at us and damage us. So we're not going to want to fly right over the top of them or get super close to them because they can very easily damage our aircraft. And then back here, there are some supporting air defenses. There are some SAMs, some radar guided SAMs in the area, but there's also quite a few infrared SAMs, which if you saw in my previous video about seed operations, infrared SAMs are very dangerous because you don't get a notification that you're being tracked. You don't get a notification that the missile's been launched. So if you don't literally see a smoke trail off the missile or know that it's been fired at you, you probably won't know you've been shot at until you get hit. <laughs> so we have to be careful about how we're going to approach this to be aware of that. Similarly, on this peninsula out here, there's some more armored units, I believe some additional tanks, um, and some IGLAs out here, some infrared SAMs. And I believe in addition to that, there's also an SA-8 SAM back here kind of guarding their base. Some of the other people I've seen suggest how to have success in this mission. Talk about starting out, coming out over the water, and engaging these anti-air threats and kind of destroying them first and then coming back and attacking the armored threats. I'm going to show you why I don't think that's a good idea and why I think the intent here uh, is to understand how this aircraft is intended to be employed. Since we're just a flight of two doing close air support, our idea with this route is to engage these targets without putting our, ourselves in a position where we will be engaged by their air defenses, essentially attacking their frontline armor from a relatively safe distance. Um, so what we're going to do 
is when we take off, we will come up with the coast here. Um, even if we don't fly directly up the coast, we'll basically aim right for this point here. Um, but if you can see the topography here, we've got essentially mountains, um, tall hills, mountains along here, and a relatively flat portion where this road goes through the objectives, although there are also raised areas and hills on the south side of that road. Um, so we have the ability to use the terrain to our advantage. So what we're going to basically do is come in here along the side of this mountain, use that as cover from some of the enemy air positions, and as we're coming around the mountain here to where we can get a view on the enemy armor, we're going to use our laser-guided missiles to engage those from as far a distance as we reasonably can to keep us safe from them shooting at us directly or getting close enough that their air defenses behind them can shoot missiles at us. And so essentially we'll come in here, take shots at them, and then break north into essentially this valley or up over this mountain to kind of take cover from their air defenses and then cycle around and continue re-engaging in this kind of cycle, doing circles and engaging in the armor until we kill it all or get killed ourselves, I suppose. Uh, we're not going to want to come in here like this route suggests and attack these armored targets, fly over them, and then circle out over the peninsula because the targets, the armored targets, will shoot at you with their machine guns. The Iglas will engage you from back here to shoot you down with infrared missiles. And these tanks and air defenses out here will also shoot at you. So if you follow this route, the way that it's laid out, you will get shot down and killed. <laughs> Unless you're very lucky. The idea here is this is the direction you're going to engage your, your enemies. But you need to understand the limitations of your aircraft. You need to understand the way it's employed. You need to understand your enemies and how they will be engaging you. So that you can say, okay, if my idea is to come in here generally in this direction, attack these targets in this area, what's the most effective way for me to do that with my aircraft? So that's what we're going to try and do today. Hopefully I don't get killed. With this being a campaign mission, if we do get shot down or killed, we are able to respawn and basically deploy new aircraft to try and complete the mission until either we get success or until our friendly units get destroyed and we fail the mission. So simply crashing on its own isn't a failure, but I'm hoping from a simulation standpoint, we can try and do this with a single aircraft. Um, so let's talk through the changes I want to make to our loadout. So by default, we have a couple of infrared air-to-air -air missiles. Now there are going to be a pair of enemy helicopters and a pair of enemy A-10s in the area. Most of the time, they get taken care of by our friendly units, by our friendly air defenses and friendly assets so that we don't have to directly deal with air threats. That said, we are not going to be taking air-to-air -air missiles because I don't think we're going to need them. Um, and what will be much more useful for us is the MPS-410 electronic countermeasure pods, which are going to enable us to try and counter the enemy infrared and radar weapons, um, basically giving us the opportunity to hopefully fly in through the area, and if we do get in range of their air defenses, hopefully not give them the ability to as easily lock up and fire on us um, as we're moving through. It gives us a pair of these rocket pods, which honestly, I don't want to use at all because you have to get so close for those to be effective that you're going to be within range of even just their tanks being able to shoot you directly. Um, there's not really a decent alternative, at least not for the amount of weight we'd have to carry. Like the, Probably what I would take in this pylon instead would be this laser-guided rocket because it has a decent standoff range, but not great versus the Vickers that we're going to have uh, access to, and they're basically just uh, extra weight that we probably aren't going to need. This is the main weapon that we're going to be employing, these sets of eight Vicker air-to-ground missiles. These are laser-guided, and they're pretty much one of the most advanced weapons that the Su-25 can employ. And so just from those two wing pylons, we are going to have access to 16 laser-guided missiles, which really ought to be more than enough on its own. But in addition to that, we are going to go ahead and um, drop these larger interior missiles. It's got the laser-guided KH-25L or 29L missiles. Um, we're not going to take the extra weight there either, but what we are going to do is instead of taking these cluster bombs, because again, to employ them, we'd have to get too close. Um, so we're going to switch these out for a pair of Karens. If you guys have watched my previous videos, you know that not only do I like Karens because it's so fun to say that I get to shoot Karens at the enemy, but they are decent standoff range laser-guided missiles. So this gives us essentially 18 laser-guided weapons that we can use to employ against ground targets. We are going to keep this Mercury LLTV pod, which is the infrared or thermal pod for helping us target our laser-guided weapons. If we were going to try and engage the air defenses directly, we would need to take a Phantasmagoria pod and some anti-radiation missiles. 
But again, that's why I'm saying that we're not going to try and do that. We'd have to basically completely change the loadout on our aircraft to engage those air defenses first, and then hope that we could either take enough weapons in addition to that to also engage those ground targets before our friendly units get destroyed by them, or we'd have to go and land and rearm. The default loadout for this mission has you loaded up to 102% of your max loadout, so it makes your aircraft really friggin' heavy with the default loadout. So not only does I think this give us exactly the weapons we need to perform the mission, but it also keeps us a little bit lighter so we have more maneuverability, more speed, um, stuff like that. So that is the idea for the loadout there. So we'll go ahead and accept that, accept that. Um, that's the plan for the mission. So we're gonna exit the builder here. You can see it's updated our weapons to reflect what we changed in the loadout. Let's fire it up and uh, see what kind of trouble we can get into. Anyway, here we are on the ground. I am gonna go ahead and open up this just to renumber my aircraft, just because we gotta go with the 41 uh, on our aircraft here. Um, it's gonna go ahead and say that we're requesting rearm, but we're not. It's just literally changing the number on our plane. Uh, there's our wingman over there. Uh, so let's bring up the map here. So here you can see our live view of this. So some of those units that we were able to see in the mission plan are hidden from us because they're not supposed to be things we see. So yeah, we're going to come through here, fly up the coast, engage these guys, see what we can do. You can see from here, um, they've got a couple of helicopters here, and they will also have, I believe, a couple of aircraft, a couple of A-10 taking off at some point as well. So we will try to be mindful of that. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get in the air. Full power! I am uh, going to go ahead and change our on-route waypoint to waypoint 4, which will essentially just give our navigation the general direction of saying, okay, I, I know I want to head to that peninsula where our friendly units are, so I'm just going to navigate straight to that waypoint rather than trying to follow our route, you know, as listed. I'm going to go ahead and control O to turn on my thermal pod. Since we're moving towards the combat zone, I'm going to go ahead and hit E to bring up our radar countermeasures. And I'm going to hit shift E, I believe, to bring up our infrared uh, jamming to hopefully make it more difficult for the enemy air defenses to engage us if we do get close enough. Although the intent here is to not get that close to them. <laughs> So we got some good speed here. You can see out ahead of us the, these mountains that I was talking about off to our left, but then you can also see kind of the downward slope of the mountain there uh, off the left side of our target right up. I'll go ahead and point to it with a target right over here. Essentially coming around this corner of the mountain is going to be where we're expecting to identify and engage those targets. And so we're basically going to come up the coast, come around that corner, try to engage the enemy armor from as much of a standoff position as we can, and then turn left, turn to the north, and fly up and use the mountains and those canyons uh, as cover, uh, and then just basically cycle around and continuing it to attack them. So here we are. All right, so we're getting close. We've got some other enemies out there on the peninsula. We have to be careful not to get too close over there, so we're going to try and stay close to this mountain, and as we start to come around here... So they're marking smoke, so you can see the positions there. I'm going to go ahead and give my wingman the direction to engage. And we're going to bring in our sensor here and see if we can identify these targets. Lock them up. Okay, there we go. we got a lock. We'll get him inside of... There we go. Launch authority for that. We are moving pretty quick, so I'm not sure I'll get a second shot here before I have to cycle around. And actually, just to be safe, we'll go ahead and cycle around. So, boom, critical hit. So we're going to turn out here. I will go ahead and flare a couple times just to be safe. Just in case. The idea here again, we're not in a huge rush, like we don't have to like completely like balls to the wall this, um, but time is a factor so we don't want to loiter a ton. We want to make these attack runs basically as quickly as we can without putting ourselves in unnecessary danger. Come around, I'll 
cut throttle a bit. Lock in my sensor again, and we'll see if we can identify some more targets to engage. There we go. We've got another lock on another tank. Launch authority. Rocket away. When that hits, hopefully we can target that tank next to him. Although we are getting close again, so just to be safe, we'll go ahead and turn away again. We're in a flare. And as we turn, we are going to stay along this mountain here because, again, we don't want to go out over that peninsula where the other enemies are going to be able to shoot at us and engage us. So. I'm being locked by a radar. Ooh, that's something that exploded near us. That's not great. So we're going to go ahead and turn back in over the mountain and try and keep closer to it, because that was scary. <laughs> Something exploded really close to us. <laughs> Alright, so here we are back where we were last time, kind of coming into the mountain. I'm going to cut our throttle here. Slow up a little bit. Bring in here. See who we can see. Looks like we got another bad boy right there. Let's get this within our weapons engagement circle. Holding launch. Fire. That is a rifle. Air to ground missile. Boom, critical damage again. So we're we're once again we're just gonna kind of try and play it safe here. Drop our countermeasures, chaff and flare, just in case. And try and stay in along the mountain here. The more greedy we get, the more we try to like engage two targets per run, the more likely it is that we put ourselves so close to the enemy that they can engage us in. We should still be good uh, on the amount of time we have to employ here. So as we're climbing a little bit, uh, yeah, we can see that our units are still moving forward here, but we still got some time before they enter and we've already done that. Oh, that, okay, there's my friendly Su-25. I was like, oh, there's an enemy aircraft. So I recognize that they've got essentially NATO forces in this game as blue and non-NATO forces as red, no matter what. But as a convention, <laughs> typically blue is friendly. So as a Russian, all of my non-NATO units should be blue. <laughs> so when I see a red aircraft icon up there, I'm like, oh shit. All right, we're actually gonna be coming in sitting on top of this mountain, which is not ideal. I'd rather be coming out of that little valley, but we'll do it anyway. And just maybe try and break a little bit harder coming around. I think we're going to see that if it hasn't already, that smoke is going to start dissipating, so we're going to have to just basically... Yeah, I think it just went away. We have to make sure that we know where our targets are that we're trying to engage, so we can continue engaging them. I believe that's a guy right there. Let's not crash into the mountain while we're trying to engage. There we go. Target lock. We are actually still a little bit out of range, so once we get to the range there... Oh, my wingman's ejecting. I'm not sure what happened to him. A few moments later... But he's having a bad time. Boom. Alright, so we're going to put some speed on, and we're going to try and just come down into this valley. And basically the idea here is uh, rinse and repeat until, we, uh, until we've had great, great, great success. We're getting awfully close here, so this is going to be dangerous, but let's go ahead and get him in the circle. Missile away. We're going to beam away a little bit here. Hopefully enough to not break gimbal. We missed. And now we're getting a radar contact. 
So this could be some bad news for us. We'll try and stay low. Defend. I think that's some bullets coming in over behind us. Yeah. We are being shot at. Looks like our guys managed to go out and take out that last tank, which means we can start moving further up and start engaging these targets further back. Which is going to make coming out of this valley less of, a, of an option and more of like we need to come out over, over the mountain, so... So, basically at this point, getting any closer, SA-18s and stuff like that, is going to put us in more danger. So while they're doing that, we might see if we can engage some of these tanks out on this peninsula with maybe a couple of Karens. Let's see if we can do that before this mission gets wrapped up. So these guys, uh, looks like some of our guys did identify some of these air defenses, so they're sitting right along the peninsula here. So it could be dangerous for us to try to engage these guys, but we're going to give it a shot. We'll come out over the water, see if we can engage them along this road before this, right in front of this town out here. Starting to get closer, which makes me nervous. Oh, wait, I think I see one. Is that him? Not sure, that may be a target. I think that's a guy, yeah. Oh, there we go, we got lock. So we're gonna do shit. Shift O for laser when we get close here. Go ahead and turn it on. Try not to get in range of their air defenses. Carrying away. We're gonna turn a little bit, but we gotta make sure we don't break gimbal. I don't know if the air defense might have shot that missile down. Nope, there we go. Oh, oh shit, that's not good. Looks like a left engine fire. All end to turn off that engine. All right, well we pushed our luck there, didn't we? Uh, we are still seem to be flying. So we'll go ahead and switch to return to base. <laughs> okay, well that's not good. Uh, are we, how are we doing on airspeed? Shift N to silence the alarms. Yeah, we're in. We're in trouble here. Let's try and gently gain altitude. All right. Well, we took a we took a infrared missile. I think that was not the fun we were looking for. Uh, let's just hope we can get back and land. I really knew I should have come at those guys from over the water. I came in over the peninsula, which put me in range of those air defenses off to their left. Mistake! I honestly very easily could have paid for that mistake with my life. That missile could have hit dead on and killed me. 
and just ripped my aircraft apart. All right, about time to turn in towards the airport. There we go. Mission success. All enemy forces oh, yeah. have been destroyed. Ground Jump forces team. have reached their objectives. You may RTB. All right, I'm gonna be Out. careful. I'm sinking. I'm sinking fast here. There we go. So we'll go ahead and landing flaps. We'll go ahead and gear just in case we have to deal with something in case the gear doesn't want to come down. No error lights. Although I also don't see any flaps. Could very well be that our flaps are what has been badly damaged, so I don't know if we're going to get landing flaps out of this. See, this is where I, I think we have a crosswind here because I'm coming in basically right at the runway, although clearly my nose is off left. Oh shit. Air, oh, I've lost the... My, my mouse cursor apparently went outside of the game. Well, that's not fair. That was not me, that was the game dropping my active area. Well, that'll make this more interesting. I'm not sure why. <laughs> why is just suddenly, oh yeah, you don't have control of your aircraft. All right, great. So we're coming in low and left, or in far right, we're way right. All right, well, this just got fucking tricky. Oh, we're coming in. Oh, we're, we're bad. We are, we are not doing great here. That really threw me off. We're rolling hard to one side. Air brakes. Let's touch her down. Parachute. Rudder. 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 Don't break. Don't break. Don't break. Don't break. Okay. Oh, my rudder's not working. Did I still? No, I still have control. Oh. Um, my rudder's not working. Wheel brake. Don't explode. I don't think I'm taxiing anywhere, buddy. I kind of just want to shut her down, honestly. I'm, a, I'm afraid if we move, something bad's gonna happen. Let's see. Yeah, my throttle isn't even reacting to that. So we're gonna go ahead and just sh we're gonna go ahead and just shut her down. Let's take a look. Let's keep the electronics on for now. Whew. Well, they say any landing you can walk away from. Uh, it, is my my pod is still open? Did it get damaged open or something like that? Cause I'm in I was in landing mode. Well, yeah, she uh she definitely got a bit of a whooping. Well. All right, minions. We look at this. We got uh, mission success. They moved in, captured their objective here, cleared those guys out. We managed to destroy one of these tanks, and it only cost us essentially, essentially our aircraft, which was otherwise in fantastic shape until we did that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I can't see that as anything other than success. If you guys want to see uh, other videos like this, you, I have all of the videos that kind of led up to me doing this mission of learning all the individual weapon systems. So be sure to go check those out. The one that I did just before this um, that I'll link in the end card was for uh, seed operations, suppression of enemy air defenses, for directly engaging air defenses. So go check that out if you want to see what I could have done to take out those air defenses directly um, rather than trying to avoid them to attack these armored targets. But that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.